So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the intro and the verse, okay? So let's take a listen first. This is the intro and the verse with um, the track drums and everything enabled. So you can hear exactly what the track sounds like. You don't have to. Okay, so the song starts off simple enough, right? A kick and a snare. There's actually two snares. I don't know if you caught that, but it sounds different on beat two than it does on beat four, right? So you catch the difference? So basically, in the stems, this track comes from the loop, right? So this pattern is the loop, and it goes the whole song. So what I've done is basically cut it up so I can voice it around the kit. Uh, and also, since it's the beginning of the song and it's kind of down and I want to have somewhere to go dynamically, I've chosen to play it basically all on pads. So I've got my bass drum on this, this kick pedal over here, um, which I would pick it up and show you, but just take my word for it, it's over here. Um, and then I took the snares and I put it on these two pads right here. So that's two. And that's four, okay? So here's what the track sounds like with me playing it. You don't have to go. In fact, I wish you'd stay. I'm on the Right? So, that's the first part. Simple enough, right? 
Um, now we go to the pre-chorus. Let's listen to that. Here's the track. How do you expect me to keep breathing when your voice alone stops my heart beating? Okay. We added something, right? Like a little cowbell part, right? So this is the first time in my eyes we kind of have options, okay? So we can grab that cowbell part and play that sample, right? We could also double that part on hi-hats. We could just play eighth note hi-hats, right? So we have some options. Let's check. I'm going to play some of those options. Let's see what they sound like. So this is, I'm going to leave the cowbell on track, and I'm going to play hi-hat doubling that pattern, okay? So that's one option. What if we did, what if we just did eighth notes on the hi-hat? How do you expect me to keep breathing when your voice alone stops my heart beating? Right? Interesting. Uh, for me, for my money, I like the cowbell. Um, to me, you know, I guess for this whole thing, right, there's no right or wrong. You know, it's all pretty situational depending on the song. Uh, this is just my opinion on this one. I don't think the hats add much and I want to save them for the chorus. So in this case, I'm going to play the cowbell part. And again, because I'm kind of a left-handed or a right-handed player, I tend to put backbeat, snare type things on the left side. And I tend to put right-handed ride type things on the right side. It just kind of makes sense uh, versus reaching across to maybe play the cowbell part or something like that. Um, so here is me playing all the parts in the chorus. How do you expect me to keep breathing when your voice alone stops my heart beating? Right? Uh, the other thing, too, is, I don't know if you guys heard it, but it, it kind of bothers me a little bit, but in that track, in the second bar of that pre-chorus, there's a little guitar part, and the pocket on it is kind of wonky, right? It's a little bit just out of time. So if we were in a band and we had a guitar player playing that, he could kind of even that out himself, right? Just play it better. Um, if I left the cowbell on track, then that part will always kind of rub, right? If I elect to play that myself in my hands, even playing along to the track, I can, I can fudge that cowbell part just a little bit to make it sit better, right? Hence kind of the name, half man, half machine, right? We are trying to bridge that gap between, you know, the machine sounds and the machine feel and make it feel like, hey man, we're humans and we can pull this stuff off, you know? So this is one instance, I feel like this is like point man, zero machine, take that, yeah. Um, cool, so anyway, let's move on from the pre-chorus. Let's get to where it gets a little more exciting. Um, so as we move into the chorus, uh, this is another spot where we have a lot of choices, right? So first of all, let me say, whenever, you remember when I was talking about how, how the computers talk to each other? That is done via MIDI. So some of you may know about this, some of you may not, but basically this computer in the front sends a MIDI message to this computer in the back. It's called a program change. And I have those set up at various points during the song when I want the sounds on my triggers to change. So on this back computer where the samples are, I have three kits. One kit has all the verse stuff, one kit has all the chorus stuff, and then the third kit has this little thing I'm gonna do at the outro. Um, so basically, right before the chorus, I have a little MIDI note assigned in this computer, and it sends the message over there, hey, go to kit two, okay? So you think about that on a bigger scale, like this is where the flexibility comes in, and this is where this stuff gets really cool because I have 10 available sounds at my disposal uh, at any minute. And then via a simple program change, I have 10 more. So I could literally have 10 sounds for the intro, 10 different sounds for the verse, 10 different sounds for the pre-chorus, 10 different and so on, provided your computers can keep up, right? So at this point in the game with technology as it is, your only limiter is CPU and the computer. 